If you already have some experience, if you're at an intermediate level or above, and you more or less understand Unreal, you can skip this part. But I still recommend that you watch it. You might be able to pick up or notice some points that you didn't know before. In the first few videos, we'll gradually get acquainted with what materials are, what types of materials exist, the different ways they can be applied, where they're commonly used, and so on. In general, we'll talk about material domain, blend mode, and so on in a broad sense. We'll go over the basics so that you have an idea of what materials are and how we'll be working with them moving forward. We'll talk about how materials are actually created, what that means, and what kinds there are. We'll also cover how they're obtained, what functions exist, what's inside materials, how everything connects, and so on. Then, of course, I'll show you an example because you can't do without examples. I'll give you a real demonstration. All the links will be available for you below. Scroll through, download them, and you'll have access to this project. In honor of this, I'm giving you these three shaders that we'll be analyzing. Let me quickly show you. Here's our first shader, Barriers. The second one is a stylized dome. Let's scroll through this example together. And the third one is Holograms. We will be looking at these three shaders specifically, and what's important is that I won't tell you how to create them from scratch, specifically but purposefully. I will tell you from scratch about these shaders, what shaders are, and how you can learn to create them yourself. I understand this perfectly well, since I myself have studied us. Zero. I searched, repeated after everyone, and thus bit by bit collected this information. I know that uh, on the vastness of YouTube there is an author who films, which they often repeat, one and the same. And as if there was nothing new happening, you very rarely come across something truly new or unexpected. So let's say, for example, if I do something, then it's paid. So what exactly do I want to say here? I've gathered all the information right here, absolutely all the information you could possibly need, because let me open this material for you and show you as a clear and specific example. Um, here we have this material when we try to create something. Let's open it. There are so many functions here that they scare you, even terrify you. What am I trying to say with this? There are functions here, and 95% of them are not used. To be fair, you might say to me, if they're not used, why are they even in Andre? What are they for? They're situational. Let's take a look. It's either a duplicate or situational or sets. The designated sets of functions are specifically intended for some very narrow and particular purpose. Let's look at an example to illustrate this more clearly. We have a node called make, and we also have a node called pen vector. In fact, it's actually the same thing. If you open them up and take a closer look, you'll see that it's all the same inside. They're all essentially duplicates of each other, with no real difference between them. That's the first thing I'm talking about. Let's take a second example. Let's type layer blind, and we see here that it's terribly repetitive. So much of it, what is all this? It's just horrifying. So here they all are. First of all, they're designed for a particular and specific purpose, for example, in particular for landscape materials. Secondly, Many of these groups or sets are often repeated multiple times, just like the same ones. Let me move this. This is a bit of layer blend. So they're repeated for certain types of textures. In other words, simply put, it's the same thing. They do the same thing, but they're intended for different purposes. So as you can see, there are things here that are either specifically targeted for a certain purpose or designed for a particular use, for landscapes, for effects, for example, for particle effects in VFX, there is also a set, materials, and so on. So there are options, but depending on whether you need it or not, you will either study it or you will not. In our case, we will go through the 5% that are the most essential. So basically, with all these nodes, you'll learn how to create things yourself. You'll go through all of this here and all the other shaders, meaning you'll understand all these techniques and learn how to create them. Moreover, when you download this project via the link, it will be completely free on Patreon. If it gets approved, I'll upload it as well, so you can easily download it directly from there whenever you need it. This should make accessing the file straightforward and convenient for you. When you're creating your own shader and working on your own project, if you need to look something up or get something specific, I'll be here to explain and show you everything you need as you work on your own project. I'll guide you through each step, making sure you understand what to do and how to do it, so you can feel confident and supported throughout the process. Whenever you need to, you can return to this project and see how something was done there, how to do this or that. That's why our first part will be more of an introduction, so you have an idea of what a material is in Blender and how it actually functions. There won't be any complicated stuff for beginners at all. After that, we'll go through each of these nodes specifically and talk about them in detail. We'll discuss each one, talk about how to combine them, and see what results you can get. And as for all these combinations, there's no need to be intimidated. There aren't that many. 
and will reinforce them in practice, not just once, but through several practical exercises. Since I told you that I'm showing you these three shaders, you can see these domes, barriers, and similar effects. Basically, they are created, or rather, approximately 90% of them were made using the exact same functions that are utilized in these materials. They are the same, it's just the remaining 10% that are situational, and we'll highlight those as well. But I'll teach you even more. Some additional things and techniques that I didn't use or demonstrate in these materials in these shaders, okay? So by the end of this course, you can confidently say, without any hesitation, that you are truly advanced shader programmers. Well, in any case, I call myself a professional, though maybe more of a piglet, but I am able to teach you what I know myself, what I am able to do, what I am skilled at. You can check out my channel on YouTube, go through the playlist and see what we do next. We'll also discuss in more detail, we'll touch on some materials indirectly, like post-process materials, and we'll also cover materials for VFX effects. So if you want to smoothly transition from shader topics to creating VFX, we'll look at how to do that properly, what exactly we need, what we need to study, only what's necessary, and nothing extra. Because often there's just too much information out there, right? Oh yeah, the one I showed you, there are functions that are personal and you don't need to overload yourself by studying them, they're useless. I can confidently say that many of the things I studied I never actually needed, they just weren't necessary for me. In this case, as a developer, of course, I studied all sorts of different things, and to some extent some of them did come in handy. But specifically in this field, creating shaders, creating VFX, there's actually very little you really need. Everything required for making materials, shaders, VFX, or post-process shaders in general, for all the materials I've made myself, again, check out my channel for what I've created on this topic, I will teach you. That is, everything I personally know, I will share with you for free. Absolutely everything I know, I'll make available to you. And as I already said, I don't know what your skill level is. That's why I'll be explaining everything. There are people who asked me to record this video course, who asked me to show everything on camera. Among those people, there are some who have absolutely no experience with Unreal. They haven't even launched it before. In other words, they hesitate, they're afraid, they have doubts, and sometimes they simply don't have enough time. There are many different reasons for this hesitation. That's why we'll start with an introductory part. Maybe, if you're more or less experienced, you already know this information. But again, I recommend watching the initial videos. The basics, the videos about cubes, and the ones that might show you things you didn't even know before. Men. All right, moving on, as I already mentioned, we'll talk about how things are connected. All these materials are created with these nodes. Everything happens inside them, specific processes, techniques, and so on. Once we go through this, I've put together a separate map for you here, even though I already shared it, and I'll keep updating it further. Apparently, you'll have the material here, so you can come back and look up whatever you need in the future. If you are working on your own material, you can open the map and see in detail how a particular technique was created or how something specific was done. Let me show you an example. Here's our map, so let's go to it together. And so, for example, with various techniques, I'll explain all these things in detail and you'll be able to open the material and see exactly what underlies it. In other words, you'll see how a particular technique works, refresh your knowledge if you forget something, or simply copy this code and paste it for yourself whenever you need it. This way, you always have access to the information and can revisit it as often as necessary. And everything will work out just fine for you, okay? All right, moving on. What was I going to say? I forgot what I wanted to say. Anyway, after we go through the practical part, that is, when we start developing, I'll begin from scratch in real time. Of course, I'll definitely start from scratch and we'll take something from the internet as well. I don't know yet because those shaders I showed you, these and maybe more, will also take. And since I haven't decided or recorded these videos as of now, we'll see what we end up creating. And based on that, together with you, as if starting from scratch, I'll begin creating it. And we'll carefully explain at every step exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. And also when I use a particular technique. I'll definitely refer to these detailed maps when using this technique and say, here, this particular technique is being used. We have used this technique before, and now I'm going to use it again here. So I'll be giving you some concrete examples, which will really help you and give you a strong, confident start. You won't have to rewatch the videos, so everything will be right at your fingertips. You can go back, look things up, open them, see what was done and how and so on. Okay, moving on to the end. 
When we finish this session, as I already mentioned earlier, we'll talk at the end about the overall experience, the process we went through, the material we used, and then we'll discuss X rows in detail. I think that's everything I wanted to say for now, or maybe I forgot something. Right now, I can't remember exactly. In any case, if I recall anything else that I might have missed, I'll be sure to mention it to you. That's all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching and for your attention. If you're interested in all of this, be sure to. All the links, as I already mentioned, will be in the description. Please check them out. Also, we are currently working on developing games. Please add our project to your wish list, even if you do not currently plan to buy it. This would truly mean a great deal to us and help us with promotion. Be sure to write in the comments whether you like our approach or not, what should be changed, and so on. Also, please share this so I know what to improve in the future. Even after recording this comprehensive and detailed video course, I fully intend to continue making videos about how the ongoing development of our projects is progressing over time, that is, what new mechanics I'm currently creating, what specific aspects I'm generally working on, and what problems or challenges I encounter along the way. Often I'll be covering things that, you know, you just can't easily find on the internet. There are so many things out there that just repeat the same information, and it's actually quite rare to find something truly useful. That's why I'm recording this course, to personally eliminate all the unnecessary stuff. So you don't have to, you can gather all the useful and necessary information to guide you step by step at your own pace. Because you really need it, not just because someone told you about it and you'll forget it. Because if you never use it anywhere, you won't remember it at all. To truly learn something, you need practice. You need to practice again and again to make it stick. That's exactly why we'll create several projects and one project in several ways. I'll keep referring back and pointing out exactly which techniques are being used here and there throughout the process. As I mentioned earlier, by the end, you'll confidently be able to develop these shaders yourself. Please join our official Discord community server. Please subscribe, like, and also add our project to your wish list and so on. It really helps and supports us. I wish you good luck. I finally finished talking.